Morning again folks. Hope you enjoyed yesterday's snow day. It was almost like a silent movie, wasn't it? Nothing on there at all in terms of audio. So this morning we're going back down to the unit. I never showed it yesterday, but we went in to check on check on things basically, make sure there weren't any burst pipes. And the snow was blowing in through the ridges on the corrugated asbestos roofing. Which meant everything was covered in snow. So off the back of that, we're going to drive in and double check that everything is a-okay with everything. It's really still quite bright and the beast from the east has not yet left to the west. Does that make any sense? Anyway, let's get into, let's get into work. first thing I'm going to do while I'm here is move the snow off the driveway. I've left the car up in the archway because I'm worried if I pull in, I'm just looking for a shovel, if I pull in I won't be able to pull back out again. So shovel, clear the snow, pull the car in. Safe as houses, I think. So we've got a big pile of snow down there. Chucked a bit of sand down, cleared all this lot up. I'm just gonna go and put some sand in the passageway there and hopefully we should be able to get in and out. No problemo. Woo! Who needs a gym membership in the morning? Right, that's warmed me up no end. So these are the casks that we pulled in yesterday. The delivery driver just left them outside. I don't blame him, there was nobody here. So it's probably what I would have done. And then this is the remnants of the uh, snow damage from yesterday. Well, it's not really damage. Everything's just covered in snow. You can see the old school bench is covered in snow. Fortunately, it's varnished, so it should survive that. And then down here, we've just got a few bits and bobs. Timber's got a bit of snow on it. That should be all right. That bag of Portland cement's probably knackered. And I don't really want to be firing this up until I've brushed the snow off of it either. But again, no damage, it's all superficial, it'll just brush off. It's frozen, you see, it's not melted so there's no water damage. No water damage on anything. So while I'm here, put the kettle on, have a coffee. Assist the situation. I'm going to assess the situation and uh, see what we can do. If it's worth doing anything or taking another snow day, I know the kids in general probably want me to have a snow day, spend some time at home with them, but I really feel like doing at least a little bit of welding while I'm here, just a little bit. Ah. Frozen. Everything's frozen. Ah. Let's hope I don't have any burst pipes. Right, I'll have to go up to the unit and uh, get some water for the old keckle. Make sure there's enough for a pot noodle.
Okay, I did some of this yesterday. I've run along there with the foam gun and I got to just above the shutters up there. I managed to use two guns of this uh, polyurethane foam, which is pretty good. I get it from Discount Fascia and Soffits, company in works up in Retford. They're pretty reasonable. Don't buy that stuff from the Builder's Centre, Travis Perkins or anything like that. It's just a rip off. And I've got a bit of gun cleaner, foam cleaner, and uh, because I've, you, what you don't want to do is ever disconnect your foam gun and leave it uncleaned. You can leave the gun on, on the foam gun, on the foam canister, but you don't want to leave it disconnected without cleaning it. So I'm just going to belt this with a bit of the old cleaner, just to sort of vaporise what's in there. What's on there, should I say? And then you disconnect, not disconnect, then you connect the gun to the actual cleaning container itself, find a box, and give her a squirt. Right, we've got the back on. She fits nicely. A few comments mentioning that the glycol should go in at the bottom and out at the top. That's right, that's the configuration I had it on the previous tanks. Now, you're not going to get any sort of thermal separation or anything like that in this glycol system because the pump that's kicking it through is literally belting through at tens of litres per minute. It's moving fast, okay? There's quite a bit of pressure on there. But what it does prevent is any airlocks in the system. So you're pushing the air out from the bottom to the top, much like underletting in your mash tun. Whereas if you fill from the top to the bottom, you get dough balls. You get dough balls because you've got airlocks within your grain. Same principle here. It works when you're feeding your pumps on your brew system as well. You feed your inlet first and your outlet has to be above your inlet. Simple physics. So that's the idea behind this. If I drew arrows on the other day, the wrong way. That was just because I was sort of trying to show a concept, not necessarily the glycol direction. So it's two o'clock and uh, I've had my pot noodle. So I'm just gonna get some fizzy rainbow belts. Mm. So I just spent 20 minutes welding on the inlet and the outlet for the glycol, looks very nice. Just backed it off with a bit of copper pipe and then scutched it off with the old grinder. It doesn't really matter if there's any, any coke in there. You can see a little bit, can you see that where it's just, it's pitted? Who cares, it's glycol this. So the corrosion resistance of this part isn't that crucial, just as long as it's leak proof. So, I don't really have to even clean those welds up, just a wire brush should do the job. So we'll get it up onto the, onto the matrix and we'll tack it on. Fingers crossed it's the right size. I know it may feel like I cannot do a thing wrong, but that's not true. Nobody's infallible and what I've just done on this 
build on this tank is put the backing sheet on for the glycol tank and it seemed to measure up nicely but I don't think that this is perfectly square so you can see the tacks I had it fit up and I'd been almost all the way around I just had this bottom leg to do and the sheet started to bulge in the center pushing away from this corner and I'd not cut it oversized so there was no way I could wrestle it on there and fight it I've just had to cut it off so if I'm going to show you this build I'm going to show you this build warts and all so you can learn from the mistakes I've made and here is the offending article so we've got a sat down there now it's not wasted it can be reused it just means the next tank that I put on the next glycol jacket I put on the other tank simply has to be 10 millimeters smaller and make sure that I fit it up when I've tacked the bars before I fully weld everything so I can use that it's not a problem so I've got a full sheet on full sheet of stainless here like I say I'm not wasting the steel because I can reuse that one and I bought it for the tanks anyway but it just means that today I've lost about an hour and a half maybe two hours tacking that tacking that glycol jacket on and uh, obviously she's a no-go she's a she's not gonna work so I'm gonna whip the plasma out while the compressors charged up cut out another section I'm gonna cut it at least 10 millimeters too big I might even go 15 to be on the safe side we'll see and uh, put it through the rollers and I guess well done well done the uh, half inch sockets again maybe not today though I might just go and have a pint and drown my sorrows shortly right Pete's here you can blame him, he's dragging no, me away no, to the pub. It's not me, it's not our fault. I'm not dragging him away. He totally is, don't believe a word of it. No. So uh, we're going to nip and have a couple of beers and then I'll edit the vlog when I get home. That's probably going to be it though, so we'll see you tomorrow. Come on, hurry up.